in intricate detail all of the transformation that must take place in society in order for it to become sustainable as they define sustainability. Nothing really new, but it's picking up steam and it's building momentum in certain circles. The worst part is, you may not even be aware of it, but groundwork is being laid. What are the main reasons for these same old tired ideas being revitalized is because those pushing globalism and government control on a global level have mastered the art of hiding it in plain sight and then just dismissing it as a joke. Their great example would be this. The United Nations Earth Summit, Agenda 21. Now, it has been adopted by more than 178 governments. I believe there's only 191 on the planet. Reading through the pages, it becomes clear sustainable development is just a really nice way of saying centralized control over all of human life on planet Earth. And, and living conditions will be intolerable. The droughts will be so bad there'll be no more corn growing. It, it will, it, not doing it is suicide. Just like dropping bombs on each other, nuclear weapons is suicide. So we've got to stop doing the two suicidal things, which are nuclear hanging and, on to our and, nuclear and, weapons. And, global and, and then after that, we've got to, we've got to stabilize the population. When I was born, no, So two, what's wrong with the population? I mean, with too many people. Thank you, Laura. Um, Rick, what does population stabilization mean, and how do you seek to enforce that? Well, we're not the epigones of uh, Malthus, as uh, some would have uh, you believe, but uh, the world population is a concern. Our concern is about American population growth, and of course, California. The 37 million people in Cal 37 million people in California today are going to be 60 million people in the next two to three decades. So you have no idea, and so, Rick. I can't. This so, me crazy. You're driving me crazy. Do you have a plan, Rick? You're, no, no, you're spouting off things from an office in California. This is my question. You're some, saying something very controversial here, and I hope people. This is uh, Acts 7 and 17. It says, But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which the Most High had sworn to Abraham, the people grew in multitude in Egypt. That's why they're worrying about the population of Israel. They aren't worrying about any other nation but Israel, okay? understand what you're saying. You think there should be fewer people in the United States. Force the borders, yes. Don't don't use words like population stabilization. I get very protective over people living. Um, I appreciate it, though. Uh, you're a stand-up guy to join us. And funny man Mike Myers, like... For everyone here tonight not familiar with Agenda 21, I would suggest that this is the beginning of the learning curve, not the end. In 1992, former President of the United States, George Bush Sr., said... Effective execution of Agenda 21 will require a profound reorientation of human society, unlike anything the world has ever experienced. And it must become clear that Agenda 21 is about controlling every aspect of our lives. How we eat, what we eat, how much we eat, how we move around, food production, the amount of food and where we even live. Dixie Gray, former Washington State Governor and Assistant Secretary, for Oceans and International Environmental and Scientific Affairs stated, Agenda 21 seeks to establish a mechanism for transferring the wealth from citizens to the third world. Fear of environmental crisis will be used to create a world government and UN central direction. Participating in a UN advocated planning process would very likely bring out many of the conspiracy fixated groups and individuals in our society and here we are. This segment of our society who fear one world government and UN invasion through which our individual freedoms will be stripped away would actively work to defeat any elected official who joined the conspiracy by undertaking Agenda 21. So we will call our process something else. We will call it comprehensive planning, or growth management, or smart growth. We ended up with sustainable development. This government has been working overtime to take away our rights to common law through many pieces of legislation. This coming year, I promise you, you will all 
also hear debate over a number of pieces of legislation that will... That's why they got this gun law going. They got all this, uh, they had the NSA things that's happening. I mean, they just need to come on, man. They just need to come on. ...about common law rights, and you have to get behind me on this, ladies and gentlemen, to stop this from going through. As Agenda 21 became more and more apparent to me, I began using the line in Parliament that the government was now declaring war on its own citizens, and that goes back as far as 2008. This, of course, led me to being labelled a conspiracy theorist. But here we are now, openly talking about Agenda 21 and the ramifications we will see in a short period of time if this is not stopped in its tracks. Coming up, if you don't live in a major metro area, you might want to pack your bags. Years ago, moving to the suburbs was a sign that you were making a better life for yourself and your family. But our next guest details a government report suggesting there may be a long-term plan to change all that for you. The effort to, quote, Manhattanize America. Next. Plus. Well, if you live in the suburbs, don't get too comfy. Our next guest says the Obama administration has plans to push Americans, slowly but surely, out of the burbs and into the big cities. Now to a controversial bill resurfacing in Congress. The FEMA camp bill allows the government to rent at least six military installations when a national emergency is declared. These emergency centers would be run by FEMA under the command of the Secretary of Homeland Security. Okay, interesting. You know, we have, we have this map that shows how the U.S. would be divided in the event of an emergency. If you can pull that out there. There it is. So this is how the U.S. will be divided into districts. You see ten of them there. Uh, this is according to the National uh, Emergency Center Establishment. So that's, actually, that's effectively the U.S. has been cordoned off into these different districts. And so these new uh, emergency centers will be spread out throughout the United States um, in, in most of these eventually. And it gives uh, FEMA and the Department of Homeland Security uh, jurisdiction over what goes on in these, uh, in these places during the time of emergency. Particularly to hear President Obama claim the power to keep people in prison indefinitely with no charges against them, no conviction, no sentence, just imprisonment. It's important to note here that this document was created in 2010 was under the Obama administration, and it predates the NDAA of 2012, which authorized military detainment of U.S. citizens. This clearly shows a long-term agenda at work. It was created in 2010, however, it's just been recently leaked to the public via the internet. The document outlines military procedures for internment and resettlement of civilians, and it describes the layout and the administration of these internment camps. It clearly states on page 38 that it applies within U.S. territory. It specifically addresses the detainment of U.S. citizens, as is indicated by the identification procedures for new prisoners on page 146, which states that social security numbers are to be recorded alongside their photograph and fingerprints. Included in the list of organizations which may be involved in these internment operations are the Department of Homeland Security, FEMA, the Department of Defense, and the United Nations. On page 260, it shows the basic layout for a facility focusing on detainment. It is depicted with interrogation areas, tribunal areas, and mortuaries. Each detainment facility is designed to hold 4,000 prisoners, and they are depicted with multiple levels of barbed wire separating compartments within the facility, with a double barbed wire fence enclosing them and watched over by 24 guard towers. Now, if there's any question whether these plans are active or just theoretical, this should be settled by the fact that the U.S. Army has been running ads for job positions in these camps since 2009, and apparently, they're still hiring. The FEMA plans to imprison American citizens have generated a lot of interest around the country in locating the potential prison camps throughout the country. These may be facilities currently being used as prisons, such as those you saw earlier, or prisons that are being built supposedly in the name of the war on drugs. Alright, this, I mean, that's pretty, this is going into old videos, but I just wanted to show you guys, this, this time is at hand. Satan knows he got a short time, so he got to get this moving. All these camps are meant for us, man. At the end of the day, they're meant for us. They're meant for you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Because they know the promises with us. 
But the difference is, when they come trying to do this, the Most High is going to raise up to do something too. So that's when now faith is really going to be tested, man. So we just got to keep faith to that time. He ain't showing himself now. I mean, he is because you got the chariots all across the world, the prophecies, man. It, it, the time is at hand, okay? So with that, I'm going to say I'll praise to Yahweh, by Shimei, Shai, and double honors to our elders. Shalom.